and a lovely day to you as well. Thank you for joining. Jumping right into it. As usual, just chill playing the TR soundtrack in the background, mixed with the Skywind OST as well. And uh, by the way, check, check, sound check. I definitely forgot to hit, uh, you know, some button. It says 48D. Sound check, okay, Hudrex. Thank you, sir. Initially forgot to properly work my uh, interface there, so my very first intro was silent. All right, here we go. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so for today's non-Morrowind thing, by the way, just wanted to take a very quick look at Mother 2 Perfect Edition, which is uh, a nifty ROM hack on one of my favorite Super Nintendo games, um, and just makes a lot of really tasteful changes to the game. Um, a lot of enemies didn't have, for example, sprites for the map, you know. Um, this adds those, creating them tastefully where needed, but also uh, makes the dialogue a bit more localized versus like, you know, the, the typical way Nintendo stuff was kind of censored when it was brought over in the 90s. So highly recommend if you never played Earthbound. Honestly, this would be even a good... I've never played Earthbound playthrough. Um, hey, Gonzo, welcome. I'm glad that uh, both you guys are here, and I hope you're both having a lovely day. And yeah, uh, you know, if you've played Earthbound before, this is outstanding, and you should try it. If you've never played Earthbound and you're into classic JRPG-style games, what are you waiting for? And this would be a good first way to play it, honestly. Um, I think, yeah, I would say so. Uh, you're not missing anything in the original, really, aside from just, again, some missing art and stuff like that so uh yeah did i ever play the sequel gonzo games asks um if you're referring to mother 3 excuse me for game boy advance yes absolutely and um i never beat it got maybe a couple hours into it highly recommend that as well too um and you could even play that without having played this they're not really that connected um and uh yeah fantastic just better in every single way um without spoiling it really and the writing is so good it's one of those games where the writing is so good that like there were times I had to stop playing it because I was just like blown away by what happened and or something that was said you know so anyway great games really great writing and it's awesome because the guy who like conceived the series is like not a game designer at all you know um Gonzo, one of my favorite RPGs of all time. You really got to finish it one of these days. Okay, word, I will. You know, of course I've got uh, MGBA on the Steam Deck and of course I've got um, let's see, there's, uh, so hold on, since we're in Mother 3 zone here, let's see, Mother 3, so you got this, um, you have the fan translation, obviously, but you also want to get this one, which is an audio improvement, uh, for the fan translation, um, and so it's, it's intended for use on an emulator, obviously, you're not going to be able to surpass the Game Boy hardware on actual Game Boy hardware, doesn't work that way, but yeah, you play this, uh, Oh, yeah, Gonzo, get on it. You're going to like it. It's like instantly on the Steam Deck. I was just like, wow, the Steam Deck actually has decent speakers for what it is. Um, and I was just kind of like, wow, this is cool. So, um, yeah, great games. I just I've loved Earthbound since, you know, I was a wee lad back in the 90s. So and uh, yeah, just if I play it now, got to use the perfect edition. Um, Maternal Bound, which this is based on, is one that I also played along the way, you know, so got to love the ROM hacking community. Great people. Great efforts all around. Um I just wanted to say there's no stream tomorrow. We're going to return to the normal schedule next week with a twist, though, because yours truly is going to be a judge in the 2023 Summer Mod Jam. And so I'm really looking forward to checking out all the awesome stuff that people are going to pump out. I have to get an MWSE set up so I can check out the what's no doubt going to be a flood of awesome and MWSE Lewis stuff. And yeah, just I'm looking forward to what everybody else is going to create. Um... And it's my first time being a judge and really like participating in a, in a mod jam outside of maybe just a kind of a small mod. You know, I think I did Marksman's Eye a couple years ago. Small stuff. I've never done anything big. My current mod that I'm working on is just too big for a mod jam. You know, I don't want to cram it in over the weekend. So anyway, uh, the, the big news seems to be, though, I got an email on GitLab that OpenMW 0 0.48 is released and... Uh, Let's check the website for a blog post. Hmm.
there's no blog post yet. But Brett definitely pushed the tag on GitHub. Yeah, all right, well, there's no blog post, but here you go, folks. Um, congratulations to all my friends on the OpenMW team and in the community and every contributor. You know, my close involvement with the team started with OpenMW 0.46 when I did the release video solo for that one, and that, at the time, was the biggest release that the team ever had. Um, Gonzo asked, wasn't it like this time last year entered RC phase? That's right, it was a long RC phase, really trying to weed out some some fixes, of uh, some bugs, rather. Um, but yeah, then um, 0.47 rolled around, even bigger than 0.46. And then 0.48, even bigger than 0.47. So, I mean, this is just colossal. We have soft particles. We have Lua scripting, obviously. We have post-processing. I mean, the amount of stuff is just so huge. Um, you know, sadly, there's no release video for myself, from myself and Atualpa this time around. Um, way back in the... Yeah, thank you, OpenMW developers, Gonzo says. And definitely, you know, thank you to every contributor and all the developers and everybody who makes it happen every day. You guys are amazing. Uh, yeah, you folks are amazing, you know, and um, there's just so many features in this release that, you know, uh, I would say about a year ago, Atualpa and I had started planning on the release video, and just the planning phase was like, oh my god, this is going to be, this is not going to be a release video, this would be a documentary, it would be like a full-on feature film, because there was so much stuff, um, it's a shame that we didn't get to kick it out, but, uh, you know, I'm sure you'll hear from Atualpa and myself again in the future. I really hope to have him as a guest on this show sometime on the stream. So, yeah, uh, big props to OpenMW 0.48. And so, <clears throat> to that end, too, I made a change to my app image page. Happily get to list 0.48 as the latest release on here. So, woohoo, that's great. You know, feels really good. Um, we'll be including this change as part of the uh, 5.9 update that we're putting out uh, today. Hopefully, we'll get, we'll get put out today. <laughs> if not, we'll resume on, uh, on Monday when I'm back at my computer. So, yeah, but going back into the list of things to discuss, I will note that um, if you're following the nightly or dev builds of OpenMW, we have TES4 plus TES5 support in the engine now. You can load Fallout New Vegas, but at the moment there isn't quite any mesh support. Um, I believe that is still kind of too experimental and it's not quite merged yet i would expect to see it in 0 0.49 though um so well i'll go ahead and load that up later on we'll go to the mojave outpost in open mw and uh we'll celebrate the outlander going to the mojave and which is just like, really exciting you know really really exciting um i had originally planned to get an uh, update to the website out there regarding a fix to the edge aa shader but uh i tried it out locally and it still is borked so we're not going to do that um if you have the OMWFX repo, I would encourage you to get the latest version of it and try the Edge AA shader yourself and let me know if it works. Didn't for me though. It blows up and doesn't um, doesn't run. So the big news uh, following, of course, the huge news of the 0 0.48 release, the big news of the stream, second biggest news, is the fact that Delta plugin actually auto cleans. Um, and this is following a discussion I had with Benjamin Winger on Matrix. And he says, Delta plugin merge, when I asked about Delta plugin doing uh, the context of this statement is I asked him about, can we clean with Delta plugin? You know, I'm trying to not use TS3 command, you know, because mostly because it doesn't natively, so, number one, it doesn't natively support OpenMW. Number two, it's effectively abandoned. It's kind of being limped along by a few individuals that hack it here or there, but it's effectively abandoned versus Delta plugin actively developed by Benjamin. He's on Matrix, chat him up right now and say hi. And so Benjamin says, Delta plugin merge essentially does that as already as part of the merging process. With the exception of GMSTs, it produces a plugin which corrects any differences from what it thinks is the correct set of plugin data produced after doing the same master comparison process, which I mentioned above, has the side effect of cleaning duplicates. So with the exception of evil GMSTs, you shouldn't need to clean any plugins if you include the merge plugin at the end. And um, so what effectively this means is at the end of the day, um, I have, yeah, quote of the year, Gonzo says. So in my collection locally, I had 31 dirty plugins. Of these, five had evil GMSTs. Just five. 
So if we can take the number of mods that people need to clean from double digits down to single, down to a handful, or less than a handful, I mean, this is one of the biggest wins that we have for, pe for users, um, really. And I actually tested this theory. Um, because I brought it up to uh, my old friend Eddie Five, who maybe some people know from Discord, and uh, I mentioned, "Hey, look, check this out." Benjamin said this, and he's like, "I'm skeptical," which is good. You know, it's good to be skeptical, especially of like grand things such as this. Bold claims require bold evidence, or, or whatever. And so I took the AF Fresh Quest mod that was recently released by Doug Goodall, which has uh, some dirty edits regarding water height and a few cells. Um, let's take a look actually at those cells. Let's say mods, quest, a fresh. So a fresh we have right here, we got water height and a bunch of these cells. Interestingly, cells like Samaris Ancestral Tomb don't even have water at all. If you open it in the CS, there's no water. So the value it has is 0.0, .0 which is copying what's in Morrowind.esm, dirty edit. To test this theory, I loaded the dirty AF Fresh ESP plugin after a plugin I made that just sets the water height in Samaris Ancestral Tomb. We enable it and we set it to 10.0. And <laughs> Section 8 says, feel bad, kind of feel kind of bad. I literally just learned who AFFA was. <laughs> yeah. I was late to that party too, man, so don't feel too bad. Um but anyway, I set the I so I set the water height, right? So set water height load af mesh.esp then i merged with delta plugin and i loaded all that in the cs just to see like what the computed result was and the result was that my water height which should be normally overwritten by afresh you know by the dirty edit um was there so i mean that's just one case of a dirty edit um and again we don't auto fix evil gmsts probably because they are uh gmsts and that's a bit more of a spicy territory to um sort of make assumptions about uh, my, another one of my modder friends as he actually rightfully asked well why don't we also auto fix gmsts and i gotta i gotta ask benjamin about that but um i assume it's because gmsts are kind of a different beast so anyways delta plugin auto cleans definitely changes the uh all right gonzo cool Definitely changes the nature of uh, the process because a lot of people are not used to command line stuff. Cleaning is a bit of a you know rough proposition now, and and in, indeed so too is Delta plugin. But now, if we have Delta plugin handling most of that, you know, um, becomes a lot less of a you know a burden on users. So. <sighs> Yeah, blows me. Uh, Section 8 says, and this was held by Twitch's chat. Uh, he says, that really blows me away, man. This thing is already TS3 command. Yeah, and again, no disrespect to TS3 command. It's a lovely tool. I'm never going to get rid of it. Um, but again, it's effectively abandoned. It doesn't really have maintainers. And I'm not saying that you can't write code in the Perl language, but people often joke that it is write only, possibly for a reason. I would encourage you to look at the source code sometime and make a decision for yourself. So to that end, anyways, though, Gonzo kindly filed this issue. And we're going to be making some changes to the website. We're probably not going to get it all in today because I do, in the first half, want to handle some edits, you know, for issues and whatnot. And then the second half, I want to look at new mods and stuff. Um, uh, oh, yeah, by the way, Section 8, glad you're here, my man. Uh, and also glad that you hopped on uh, Matrix. And I'm really enjoying the discussion that's unfolding between uh, you and Benjamin. And I just want to take this moment again to encourage people to hop on to the Port Mod Matrix. Um, let's see, Port Mod GitLab. How do I find access to the port mod matrix uh johnny well this is how you do it check it out you just use your favorite search engine you want to end up at the port mod gitlab repo and then you do a control f and you type matrix and that'll take you down here communication benjamin has a link here to the port mod meta space and then you know just get a uh, matrix client i use element desktop <laughs> found this one but assumed it was something else section 8 said yeah yeah well it's a uh, you know Matrix is kind of confusing, I don't know. But anyways, I encourage you, regardless, to brave the confusion. Get on there. It's not much different from Discord, really. Um, and yeah, join the conversation. We're, you know, we're building. That's the thing about Delta Plugin instead of TS3 Command. There's no, you know, 
organic growth of the tool. You know, we're talking about how to build out Delta plugin and make it useful based on actual use cases. So um, very cool. Love being a part of it. Big respect to Benjamin. Most love to him as always. Um, and yeah, so we'll be we'll be building that into the website going forward now. Um, I did want to take a moment also to take another look at uh, Welcome Back Gonzo. Glad to have you back. I'm um, going to take a quick look at uh, Lua Multimark by Zach Has a Cat, which is all good to go. Um, and a quick note about some of the, you know, the perils of doing experimental stuff. And, you know, be careful with your important save game that you care about. And then we have a couple issues to review um, from email and on GitLab. And then, as I said, in the second half of the stream, we're going to look at the lineup assembly, which I have continued on GitLab. Haven't ported this over yet. And I also... You probably already noticed. Don't have the chat overlay. Just was a busy week for me. But hey, my yard is like 70% weed-free now, so it feels good. Um, mad props to my neighbor, Vicente, and a big thanks. He is the man. All right, so let's go now um, and take a look at New Vegas in. First, before we get into Multimark, let's take a look at New Vegas in OpenMW. So I've actually, <laughs> because I'm so stoked about New Vegas, I've actually added New Vegas to my sort of like mod data setup here. We'll go ahead and just add this data path to my openmw.cfg. And um, this, by the way, disclaimer here, this is all highly experimental stuff. Don't try this at home, as I always say, and maybe do, you know, but don't expect miracles, okay? This is not Todd at work here yet. This is, I mean, this is, in my opinion, beyond Todd but yeah it's not <laughs> it's not New Vegas yet but it's gonna be cool to see it nonetheless so all right let's uh, fish is gonna give me some annoying quotes around these files that I don't want oh well so did bash that must be a kitty thing okay well thanks but as you can see here we got quite a few BSAs Todd has forsaken New Vegas a hey, fane hey welcome Glad you're here. We're just taking a look uh, at uh, using 0 0.49 exper experimental builds to load up New Vegas um, without any meshes as of yet. Still work in progress. We're just going to do these main ones. I'm not going to do any of the DLCs. Um, yeah. Just because if there were meshes to actually look at, it would be more compelling. For sure. Um, whoop. There we go. I suppose I can leave the quotes, I hope. In theory, you could use OpenMW Launcher, by the way. Um, actually, yeah, let's see. All right, where am I going here? There we go. All right, give me the latest launcher here. Let's see. Yeah, okay, so there's a, it's very unhappy. I don't know. I seem to recall there was an MR kicking around about, hey, but what do you know? They're here, not enabled. Maybe it didn't like um, the quotes are in there. I'm just going to go ahead and tick them in here and see how it rewrites my file just for morbid curiosity. But I guess it didn't like them. But hey, here we go. So we're looking at the BSA files. They're clearly here. Hey, how about that? That's good. Props to the team. Thank you. Again, OpenMW team. Um, let's see. Oh, it probably put the BSAs back at the top. Yeah, so I guess it doesn't like the, the single quote. Weird. Uh, I guess we'll have to abide by that. So let's go ahead and... Let's just go ahead and... Zap those out of there real quick. And uh, we're going to need one ESM file here. Actually, I'm not going to put it in there. Content. If Ayn says, I think it creates a new mod list every time you add a mod where the new mod isn't enabled yet. Oh, in the launcher? Yeah, I think so. Um, it can be kind of busy sometimes, I noted. Um... One of these days, we're gonna. I want to drill down into that behavior because I think it's definitely useful as a content manager. OpenMW 
launcher isn't quite a mod manager, but it's a pretty decent content manager, I would argue. This should be enough um, to go to the Mojave Outpost. So let's go, huh? And again, this is highly experimental. Only on a dev build right now. Yeah, you see it chugging on loading those New Vegas VSAs. Quite a lot more content in those than Morrowind ones, I think. Do I have uh, Section 8? Oh, do you have unsupported assets enabled? No. No, no, I don't. Okay, so wait, real quick. Let's figure out what the hell that is. You'll find out what I mean. So yeah, that's all the broken meshes, right? Um, let's actually enable that then. I'm trying to look in the git log here for what's the load unsupported NIF files. I think that's what I need, right? Yes, thank you, Section 8, yep. When in doubt, you always you can always check the source code as well. So let's uh, settings, FW for firmware, if you're ever curious. Uh, framework, firmware, framework, which is the kind of laptop I use, highly recommended. Model, uh, looks like, yeah, models. Oh, <laughs> here we go. Thank you for that call out, Section 8. I think you may have saved the day in the Mojave today. All right, let's go back here now. Games, OpenMW. All right, get ready. I don't know. Um, I assume the console supports loading cells via, like, the form IDs, which is, like, the sort of hex-looking names that later TS games use. But for now, I seem to be able to do this. And it will take me there, as expected. Ho, 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 ho. Oh, man, it's stuff. Oh, well, I mean, the exterior looks pretty decent, though. This is certainly Mojave Outpost. Here we are, Outlander. This is a strange land indeed. Hold on, let's maximize this. This is magic. Yes. Look at this. Um, and so I know lots of people have worked on this over the years. But huge props to Capastrophic. Definitely notice that they're, like, chugging away on this. And this is just, like, you know... I have said before, and I'll say it again, I love New Vegas. Obviously, no object paging support here, by the way, too. But, I mean, oh, boy, this is <laughs> this is amazing. Oh, wow. All right, hold on. We have, to, we have to go a little further with this, if you'll indulge me. The king of NIFs, right? Capo always has, though, like, seriously, just hacking away. Going back to, you know, as I mentioned, I was a part of 0 0.46 release video. We had support for Glow in the Dark there. And uh, that, again, was a combined effort of a lot of people. But Capo, you know, has a hand in the research and uh, development of all that. And uh, <laughs> look at this. Uh, yeah, Section 8 I says, I have waited so many years to see OpenMW run New Vegas, Super Hearts, and I mean, me too, my man, me too. I, uh, you know, I have a pretty good, uh, pretty well-oiled machine for running New Vegas with wine and NVSE and mods and all that stuff, but it will be amazing uh, to, number one, first off, get a setup, you know, working for New Vegas, but also, we're going to have to re-implement a lot of NVSE mods, so, hmm. It will be a glorious day when our Lua API is powerful enough to do um, the kinds of things that we'll need. You know, uh, just for example, we could probably already do sprinting. Um, yeah, get those Lua hats on. That's right. Um, we could probably already do like the quest objectives. Um, actually, I noted that um, Danae's Friends and Friends has MWC Lua support. And I think all those things can be done with uh, OpenMW Lua in the dev builds right now. Um, so maybe we can look at that later if I don't forget. Um, or any of y'all curious about Lua could look at that. But I'm pretty sure the random spawning of NPCs, um, healing when you're, uh, if you have a healer companion can heal you when you're low on HP, that should be totally be doable in 0 0.48. Um, so yeah, maybe it would be a cool port job. And I just want to head actually over to New Vegas. 
Uh, <laughs> no map quite yet, but we have a local map. No world map, though. All right, let's pick up the pace a little bit over here. So, as you can see, there's still quite a few um, meshes that are borked. But, uh... I wonder if the strip is still underwater. I think they fixed that, says Section 8. We're about to find out. We're going right there. I don't see water now, but maybe that's something that would load, you know, as we get closer. Uh, one of my favorite places right here, good old quarry, which doesn't look very quarry-like. I think the terrain colors probably aren't properly red because I'm very certain the terrain isn't all, you know, this color, this sort of brown tone. Uh, <laughs> This looks kind of broken, too. Yeah, okay, that's the section eight says that's the default Morrowind texture. Yeah, okay, so we're just defaulting here, which is fine. Getting into New Vegas here, there. Did I say how exciting this is? Because this is pretty cool, pretty, pretty cool. All right, so I wonder, could I go into the airport from here? Let's just go. Yeah, McCarran. Hey, you know what? This is one place where I always got crashes until I realized that I had a shitty mod set up. So, there you go. Can I go in here? Door. Ho oh, ho! World spaces, my friends. World spaces. That's what you're looking at right here. We got another world space here. Uh, the airport. Which is like a actual, real, but separate, distinct exterior versus like the fake exteriors that Morrowind uses. Um, what that means is 0 0.49 can enable stuff Starwind, like Starwind, uh, to do great things. Yeah, <laughs> this is a world space, not int as x This is the real deal, my friends. Um, so what you're looking at here is huge, you know. Two suns on Tatooine, uh, actual god rays with the fake exteriors that will now actually be able to be proper exteriors. So this means actually good things for existing content right now for existing mods. Can't wait to see what kind of OpenMW uh, mods will take advantage of actual world spaces. Gonzo says, whoa, I didn't even think of that. Amazing. Yeah, indeed. My own in-development mod will use world spaces now because I've decided it's a 0 0.49 exclusive for various reasons. Namely, having quest support in the engine is just like, why would I use MW script for a lot of things now? Um... You can't read, uh, I'm sorry, you can't write quest states, I don't think, in Lua. Or maybe you can't edit them, rather. But uh, nonetheless, a lot of janky stuff I was doing with MW script I can just do with Lua now. Okay, so... Uh, well, I've experimented with it a decent bit. You can't do anything with it, sadly. You need ESM4. Oh, okay, with the world spaces, gotcha. I see. Okay, so we don't have quite have it in OMW add-on or OMW game yet. So we can see here the farms are a little borked. It's not loading the, the buildings here. And, uh, yeah, here we go. So uh, here's the... You know, here's the, the distant representation of the strip. Let's... You know, I think they've, if they fix the AI, you could probably hack a lot of crap with Lua, though, it says uh, Section 8, perhaps. Hmm. If we're impatient, maybe we should do that. I can't wait for this fork working, Gonzo says. Yeah, for sure. Like this, uh, so what? what's exciting about this is not only being able to play New Vegas, but it's also having the Lua API be powerful enough to play New Vegas. So here we are in yet another world space. We're in the Freeside Eastgate world space. Gosh, it's been so long since I played the game without Freeside, uh, with Freeside open that I totally forgot that this was like a separate cell. I'm used to being able to just like walk straight through here. Ugh, bizarre. <laughs> Thank you, PS3, I think, is, is why we have these tiny little chunks of Freeside here. Yeah, so you got to go in through here. Okay, wow, it's just been so long. Going to make it into the strip, folks. Here we go. Oh, man, okay, awesome. Oh, this is so exciting. We got like a floating chunk of gra Morrowind grass here. That's weird. Must be like a form ID collision or something. 
Yeah, because that's not <laughs> that's definitely not that mesh. Um, anyway, I don't know. Maybe we'll follow up and when it's a little more official, we'll see if that's still there and file a bug report if we need to. No Robotrons to stop me. Here we go. And yeah, the oh man, strip open too. Always using that. It's been a long time since I've seen the divided up strip, but here we are. Lucky 38. Gamora. Man, this is awesome. Yeah, my eyes, but also my soul, says Section A. And I have to just echo that. Um, Pretty cool, man. This is just one of my favorite games. As I said before, and I'll say it again and again and again, at following Morrowind, one of my favorite games. And it's just outstanding to see this. Eddie, I hope you're seeing this. You should see this. Eddie's not watching. All right, I'm almost done here, I promise. I just wanted to walk to the end of the strip. And yeah, uh, wow. So, very exciting um, demonstration of not only the capabilities of the engine to load other, you know, game content, but also um, the way of loading it. These, these world spaces, this whole concept here is just... So yeah, thank you for joining me on this journey. I know there's already a multiplayer thing for New Vegas, but my brain just starts exploding imagining what TES3MP can do with this, says Section 8. Yeah, and as I recall, wasn't that a project David C. actually worked on? Um, was the New Vegas EXE thing? Um, I seem to recall that in an interview he said that. But in any case, yeah, having Fallout multiplayer is like, after you realize Morrowind multiplayer could be a, a, you know just amazing, you realize, oh wait, Fallout multiplayer though, wow. So yeah, okay. Uh... We're just going to note here about the option that I was missing. And yeah, uh, if you feel so inclined at home, don't try this, but do at home. Um, get yourself a dev build. Load up uh, New Vegas. I'm sure Oblivion probably works. I don't have that installed locally. Fallout 3. Um, do I have Fallout 3? Oh my goodness. Are we going to have to take a look at Fallout 3 too? Hold up. Yeah, I do. <laughs> All right, we're doing it. Just real quick. We're going to go to the mall. Oh my, that's not what I want. There we go. Hey. Okay. Conveniently. Basically the same as New Vegas. All right. Here we go. Let's go to the Capital Wasteland now. No! Oh, textures too. Oh man. Let's take another look at what we had there. We had to adjust the textures, okay. Are they even different BSA files? It's a fair question. Probably lots of data. Not probably, I mean for sure. You just play the games and you can see that a lot of stuff in New Vegas is from Fallout 3, which, you know, makes sense. All right. Now, I've never done this before, so I don't even know how to get to the Capital Wasteland. Let's just play around here. Um, oh. Hmm. First off, let me make sure the ESM actually loaded and the data is there, should be there. Yeah, Fallout 3 ESM, you can see at the top of the screen there. We got the data. It just could be maybe there's like a... Hmm. DC, Georgetown, Tamal, okay. Section 8, thank you. Georgetown, Tamal, oh, here we go, all right. Uh, 
Let's maximize this. I happen to be in the middle of a Fallout 3 playthrough. Ooh, here we are. Here we are. This looks like it's mostly working, too. Okay, now here's some busted meshes before I go outside. Should be a familiar scene to anybody who's played Fallout 3. You're in the, in the subway here. The future, folks. Here it is. Here it is. All right, let's go outside. Mostly anything with animation nodes, says Section 8. Thank you. Okay, that's good information. Uh, the broken stuff. Let's go outside. So this is wilderness. Wow, so this is the capital waste. No, no. Yeah? Yeah, maybe this is the capital wasteland or this is some... Okay, no, this looks like, yeah, the mall. We're in the mall here. Got the Lincoln Memorial going on right here. With some epic shadows caused by that thing, which I don't know what the hell that is. But if we go this way, we'll get the Washington Monument, and the thing goes away, apparently. Boom, here we go, Washington Monument. Now that. Uh, feast your eyes on that. And we'll go down the mall a little bit more. I came to this place... When I was a young lad, by the way, and walked around here in real life. Uh, so it's a little bit... I think it's trying to render shadows for Washington, says Section 8. That would make sense. It looks... You know, but anyway, coming here as a young lad and then seeing Fallout 3 is very, you know... It's a little spooky. Here we go. Yeah! I was just here last night playing. There's like a big fight going on under that dome. <laughs> if you've never been there, be careful. <laughs> wow, all right. Again, like super mad props to the OpenMW team. Congrats on 0 0.48 and, you know, look at this. Found you, yeah, right? <laughs> says Section 8, found you. This is amazing, super exciting. Um, I just, I can't believe what I'm seeing, you know? It's finally happening. <laughs> it's only a matter of time. I, when I first discovered OpenMW, the engine could load Morrowind basically this well. It could load all the NIFs correctly, but there was no, you know, NPCs couldn't walk around. Um, you, could, you couldn't start a new game. Scripts probably didn't work. Um, man, I spent almost the entire first hour looking at TS4 games. Yikes. Fallout 3 in New Vegas. It's my second and third love after Morrowind. You can't blame me for this. This is too cool. Too freaking cool, man. Wow, okay. That's enough of that, I promise. Still an open MW stream, Section A. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> uh, wow, so that was great. Uh, if you didn't know, I'm a, little, I'm a little pumped about that. And I'm looking forward to it. And yeah, again, you know, we got to still have a long way to go. When I mentioned OpenMW was barely playable, it was like another eight years before uh, it was considered like reasonably good to play you know just vanilla Morrowind um, so we have a long way to go to be clear all right um so yeah let's uh, let's take another look now at uh, mods gameplay multi mark let's uh, do a quick get pull here in case there's some updates let's take a look at this huh um, this is one that's definitely going on the mod list very soon because it does support 0 0.48, actually. Um, Zach has a really clever approach to implementing a custom Lua menu. It's not perfect, but it's pretty awesome. Uh, and I think it's definitely good enough to replace, um, the classic mod just because the classic one is already out of date, um. Section 8, by the way, not to distract too much, but it occurred to me, speaking with Simon, that perhaps the export to OpenMW thing could be ported to Bash. Uh, yeah. I definitely would like to talk about that some more, and I still actually owe Simon a review of all of, you know, um, their proposals and all their thoughts. Um, yeah, it's it's Python, yeah. Um, my, fir my main question is, like... And same with MLOCs, frankly, is like, well, why can we not make these things just read OpenMW, you know? Why do we need an export plugin? Frankly, same from MO2. Like, I don't understand why these projects haven't adopted actual support for OpenMW. I would hope to go that route, though. Like, 
when we get to having a discussion with Simon and hey, if you happen to see this, I, if anything, would love to help get there, right? Like, let's just read OpenMW natively and, and you know, not have to deal with, like, pretending it's not a thing, but it is with plugins. And it's part of why I really appreciate port mod, even if it's not, you know, really for most people. Um, he actually told me there's an OpenMW version of the Polymos fork. I thought the Polymos fork supported OpenMW. Um, you know, I will say I did work on a private fork of, I forget who's Rybash code one time, but um, there's two versions of it. Section 8 says, okay. Yeah, it's it's not impossible to do. You just got to find the parts that make assumptions about Morrowind and, and make it, you know, also know about OpenMW and stuff. Not easy, but not hard, really. Anyway, that's something I would love to see, I think, more than anything, is to have MLOX and Rybash and MO2 and anything else, like, actually support OpenMW. It's problematic for MO2 because MO2 assumes that its target games don't have the features OpenMW has. So MO2 needs to be able to, like, relinquish... VFS and other things. I'm sure it could do it. All right. Anyways, um, that was a great call out section eight. Absolutely. Um, someday I would like to spend more time, you know, onto the on the topic of like actual mod manager setups, right? Like not just OpenMW launcher, but like Rybash. You know, is the OpenMW capable one actually usable? Let's use it. Let's see how it works. Or port mod GUI. Um, you know, Pope Rigby's been working on the port mod GUI for a long time and needs some feedback on it, frankly. Um, so we should look at that, you know. Anyways, I'm going getting off the deep end here. Whoa. Let's uh let's pull up my testing script first, actually. So mark. All right. Let's play with this mark and recall. And actually, um, yeah, mod managers are an all-year rabbit hole. Lol, sorry, Section 8 says, hey, no worries. It's That's basically why I don't use one. Um, because OpenMW basically does everything I need, and I was able to write software to fill in the gaps. You know, like the, the validator, for example, fills in, like, I think a pretty big gap with regard to what Simon refers to as loose files. Um, there's definitely gaps remaining, you know, with regard to... Um, it would be nice to have, like, a, a better way to visualize conflicts or masters or things like that but we have everything you know the manual crowd has everything it just looks bizarre to people who don't do it manual I guess alright let's uh, let's get to a reasonable sand holes welcome my friend I'm glad you're here thank you for hopping in I hope you're ready for some more wind Section 8 says, yeah, you know Delta plugin does that loose file thing too. VFS find. Yes, exactly. That is how the, um, uh, well, so, uh, that is how the gr uh, ground cover of thing is, uh, works. And Zachogenic, hey, welcome. I'm glad you're here. No real changes since last time you showed it. Last time I showed it, it didn't work, uh, because actually, and this is, uh, something I hinted at earlier, when you're, uh, playing around with experimental stuff, it is possible to put Lua data into a state where it borks a script. And actually, I think the last time I showed it, you had fixed it, but it was still borked because my Lua player binary data file was in like some kind of a bad state and I nuked that and now it works. And so I just, I wanted to show it actually working since last time I showed it actually borked. So here we go. Let's run over here, set a point. Mark to Satanine and I think I should just get one. And so, yeah, we have the, the really n nifty selection menu. And I'm just going to go ahead and we'll teleport back there. Boom. Lua mark and recall. That does not depend on um, knowing necessarily about content. You know, this will work with TR. This will work with your, you know, Duke Nukem player home mod. Or it will work with anything. It will work with Fallout New Vegas, in theory. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, yeah, thanks, Zach. You the man. All right. Just really wanted to show that actually working. So anyway, moving on to issues, though. Um, an anonymous email came in to me about SSR shader file casing on Linux. And uh, that's really interesting because mods... Uh, whoa. File, speaking of casing, got the caps going on. 
shaders on WFX. Um, let's see. So I actually have the capitalized SSR shader here. I'm gonna, I've never had a problem with it because the SSR shader actually works on this machine, on my Steam Deck, on my gaming PC, all gaming uh, Linux machines. Let's just go ahead and... Uh, thanks. This is for posterity, load it up right now. And we'll check the log for some kind of error. Um, but yeah, uh, one of our friends out there on the you know, anonymous internet land was having a problem and didn't get the shader to work until they lowercased it. So I'm wondering, uh, you know, what, and I will reach out to this individual, but I'm wondering what file system did they have or any other, because Linux has just a lot more situations you could end up in, you know, versus your normal um, commercial OS. But he, you know, this person could have who knows how many file systems or configurations. So I'm just wondering, maybe there's something there. But yeah, um, let's. We'll confirm that it's loaded, first off, by just hitting uh, F2. We got SSR right here. SSR is right here. <laughs> oh, man, Gonzo, man, my internet is losing it today. Oh, no. Uh, sometimes I have Comcast days as well. Looking forward to getting fiber in the neighborhood, which hopefully will be happening soon. It's really tough when you have fiber and then you go back to Comcast and it's like, oh, just take away my internet completely. Uh, section 8, I saw it complained about missing some file further up. Yes. So we have a couple file uh, shaders configured. These are um, these two are Zester shaders, which I don't have configured on this setup. And uh, this is a DOF shader that I've shared with some people that I was going to release. Um, I want to actually have it included in the OMWFX shaders repo because the... Oh, way further? Section 8 says, okay. Because the DOF shader they include there is just, it's bunk. It doesn't work. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. Okay, huh. Interesting. It loads it twice. Is that what you saw, man? We'll keep going, though. That one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, ah, seems like it's trying to load... Uh, Load my shaders twice. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Not That's not shader related. So it was something else. Okay. And yeah, this is the Edge AA shader blowing up on me, by the way. I don't know. This is my Intel GPU. So maybe uh, on my AMD boxes, you know, my Steam Deck, maybe this doesn't happen. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, you can see here, uh, I've got just an X4 file system. Nothing like too crazy. Um, I guess X4 is pretty standard, but I don't know these days. I live under a Linux rock with regard to what's the hotness. Not too much, actually, but yeah, I, for file systems, I just use I just use X4. And yeah, it's working without a hitch. So I don't know. Maybe we should. I'm debating, and we're not going to do it today, I don't think, but I'm debating adding a note there. Um, but I do want to reach out to the individual and get some more information about what exactly their system did. <laughs> All right, so it's not a it's not a Linux specific issue though. That's clear because I've been using this again on three different Linux machines. So, yeah, Province Cyrodiil ESM file name change. Let's take a look at that. All right. Oh, you know what? Still, here we go. All right, province Cyrodiil. There we go. Indeed, uh, this one since a pretty recent update. Section eight says I've never seen a distro that won't do X four out of the box unless you encrypt. OpenMW is sort of loosely supposed to normalize file names, anyways. Uh, I think. Excuse me. I think I'm about to sneeze. Whew. All right. Sneeze averted. I believe in recent builds, 0 0.49 um, it is no longer case sensitive, the VFS. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And ELD mentioned it uh, in chat semi-recently, I think. Um, oh, man. Allergies are kind of killing me right now. Please excuse me. I'm having a hard time breathing frankly <laughs> all right as you can see here we got Sarah Main 
Ryan.esm. So we'll go ahead and change that. Excuse me. Don't mean to sniffle into the mic. Sirmain ESM. And uh, we can call that a day. Uh, so, oh yeah. So first off, let's commit this. Um... We'll commit that one. Hooray! That's just so exciting. I am thrilled that finally Open OpenMW OpenMW 0 0.48 is launching, launching or launched soon. Um, and yeah, we now officially have the, all the folks that will only play stable builds for a good reason can finally enjoy Lua and post processing and all the things that we've been enjoying for like a year. Okay, moving on. Let's commit this change. Uh, I guess that's an okay commit message. And actually I'm gonna push that up to GitLab and we'll get that MR opened up. One of these days, I'm going to get fully switched over to using GLab. I love GitLab and all the people at GitLab, the company and the project, and huge thanks to them for supporting my project. They have given the modding OpenMW organization, so all of this stuff that you see right here, all these repos, two pages of, of stuff has access to the ultimate plan features and they gave it to me for free as an open source project. So huge thanks and huge respect to the GitLab people and all the love to them and support. And I'm happy to be here using their product. That having been said, I'm not the biggest fan of the user interface. <laughs> and I do wish that, um, I don't know. It's not like something you can easily fix really, but it's just a little too busy for me. I don't know. Anyways, I love GitLab. I don't love the UI. Get this MR going though for today's changes. Gonna tag Gonzo and her Drex. Big thanks to both of you. <laughs> Section 8 says One thing I've learned since starting programming is that every UI sucks, and it's not really anyone's fault. Shrug. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm not like complaining too much. You know, I don't want to sound like I, I am hating on them too much. It's a hard problem to solve. You know, like I said, Pope Rigby, for example, has been working on a GUI for Portmont for a while. And it's just, it's hard to know. Like, is this good? Is this going to be usable for people? Um, it's some of the hardest, least rewarding programming that there is, you know. Um, and that's, I think, why you find like the launcher and the CS tend to be less, you know, hot targets for programmers than the engine itself. All right. Uh, yes, yeah, so that was a that was a pretty easy change. Um, certainly, got time to look at a few other things. I think we pulled up some things on uh, on GitLab here. So, yeah. Okay. So actually, Gonzo, uh, Gonzo and I had chatted about this before, and I didn't actually get a chance to look at this. I wanted to have coffee and look at this today, but I ended up, you know, having a donut instead. So. <laughs> yeah excuse the messy text Gonzo says um, I pull it out right now let's see what's in there it's not pretty that's cool well maybe we can work with it though um, yeah okay yeah I could grab this though right we could easily grab this and find right so we could grab for this cleaning this and we can compare what you have against what I have um, but anyway I mean we could just look at it anyways and I can tell you right now just by looking at this, okay, auto cleaned, auto cleaned, auto cleaned, auto cleaned, auto cleaned, auto cleaned, auto. Pickpocket rebalance is getting replaced by our friend Afane's new mod, so yay! No need for that. Ovirus legacy, auto cleaned. Building up Ovirus legacy, auto cleaned. Boom. Dark Brotherhood. We got to need to clean this one. Uh, the notes detail some stuff. Okay, cool. Thank you, Gonzo. Appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, so this works. Uh, I'm not going to go all the way through it. We're about halfway through, but this, a lot of these I have already gotten in my own 
local setup. And so, yeah, over time, what we're going to do is we will note the information about what is cleaned and for what. Um, but for mods like, for example, T-Tooth's missing NPCs, no nullis, you don't need to clean this. Delta plugin is just going to handle it for you. So we will note that it's dirty, but we will say needs cleaning, no. And again, you know, I've effectively taken my own personal mod list down from 31, possibly more that I haven't found plugins to just five that I need to clean manually, you know. And like maybe Dark Brotherhood is, author is active. Join the Dark Brotherhood's author is active and maybe we can reach out to them. Um, you know, I'm a little hesitant to tell people to clean their mods not everybody is open to the idea, and I, and frankly, I just don't like telling people you do this, you know. Um, it feels a little rude sometimes. But in any case, we can do our part, and we can reduce the, uh, so if we go right here to the website right now, and we look at total overhaul as is, we look at the final checklist, and we can see the cleaning list right now is 27 plugins, and most of these... I think the only exception on here right now is this one. So we would take 27 down to one. There's a couple new ones that we're going to be adding that do need to be cleaned, but hey, you know, maybe we can reach out to those authors and work with them uh, in a polite way, you know. I don't mean to sound entitled or anything, but hey, you know, you've got evil GMSTs, maybe you want to clean those out, unless you need them. And then we need to note that. So in any case, yeah, very good. Um, love this, and thank you for the work, Gonzo. We'll get to this over time. You know, um, wanted to pull up another issue filed by our friend Herdrex. Many thank yous uh, for gathering this research, which is a work in progress, but um, definitely noticed some stuff. Uh, I found these books here in Smears. A spoiler alert, by the way. Whoa. If you haven't played AFresh, spoiler alert. Um, I definitely found these things, but just didn't note them. Um, so, yeah, we can add this to my already in progress patch, which moves this one. Um, Three of those I was unable to clean, Gonzo Game says. Really? Unable to clean? Um, can you please elaborate? I don't think I've ever been unable to clean something. Um, oh yeah, pay no attention to my torrent there. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, TS3 Command didn't make any changes. Really? Huh, do you happen, off the top of your head, do you happen to recall, you know, any of those? Let me know. Um, Cause yeah, I definitely would like to see the output, you know? Uh, Sabatur mods, okay, cool, Sabatur, all right. Cleaning is just such a thing, you know, that is, yeah, see this wouldn't need to be cleaned. Clean duplicate, duplicate record. Uh, no problem, Gonzo. Sorry, I'm operating on the LTE right now. No worries. Hudrex, all right, my man. Says BRB. Oh. Are you, uh... You must be using some version of TES3 command. Because I've never seen this before. But indeed, this is the thing that Eddie made. I've never seen this output before. I glazed over it um, when we looked at this file earlier. But yeah, this is the thing uh, that Eddie made. That's just their notes. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah, I've never seen this before. Oh, no, no, this is Gonzo's notes. Oh, okay, got you. Whoosh, okay. Whoosh. I need to sip of some look right. So, yeah, on these ones, we'll add the, when we say needs cleaning, no. Um, but it does need to be, it is dirty. Yeah, time to caffeinate. I think I've had too much caffeine, honestly, and it's got to slow down. Quest part one, clean, for example. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh. Gotcha. I see here. Yeah. So we'll add the cleaning output, but then we'll note, like, this is something that Delta Plugin is just going to... Oh, whoops, I mean part two. Okay. 
Doesn't mention that it needs cleaning. Doesn't want to clean it either. Ah, interesting. I wonder if this is one that I cleaned. Um, I'll have to check on that later. But yeah, so what we'll do is we'll um, close without saving. We will go ahead and uh, we'll build up information about what we're changing in here and we'll you know we'll keep the the effort going until we got everything updated but the plan is mods that actually are dirty with evil gmsts will note and we'll say yes needs cleaning but any other kind of dirtiness that gets auto cleaned by delta plugin we will say no does not need cleaning we will note that the plugin is dirty because people will check but we will also note that Delta plugin does auto cleaning, and I think it's worth uh, update to our um, our page about cleaning, right? And just say, hey, you know, Delta plugin takes care of the majority of category of dirtiness. You know, um, it's worth mentioning on here. I think for sure. Uh, so yeah, we'll have to add that to the effort as well. All right. Well, it's about that time where we got to start looking at new stuff. So, I'm going to go ahead and set my desk down and uh, get ready. There we go. Excuse me. All right, lineup assembly time. And we'll definitely get a deploy before the hour closes. I guess we got some changes to put up there. All right, so uh, let's see here. I believe we have an issue here where we can continue adding things and I, I cleaned it up a tiny bit after last week's stream Gonzo says yeah I'm going to have another crack at formatting that issue appropriately it was nesting collapsible boxes for some reason I couldn't figure out yeah markdown quickly can turn into a rat's nest uh, <laughs> good luck um, maybe you can get a uh, like an editor that does like a live update preview for markdown I would imagine VS Code has something for that, but that might help. All right. Mod additions that I made easily distinguishable by spamming it with labels. <laughs> All right, here we go. So I did, yeah, I put some uh, some headings there to kind of separate uh, what we're working on. And I took the liberty of adding ground coverify and was light fixes there. Um, people checking in as we progress through this can can refer to this. Um, so anyways, we left off at Shall Overgrown. We were looking at caves and dungeons. So let's get back to it. Uh, All right. And speech craft rebalance, actually where we left off. So... Uh, Thank you again to our friend Efane for putting this one together. Also, the pickpocket rebalance, which we will cover as well. All right. Uh, yeah, next up, for the right price. Um, probably one of the hardest nuts to crack in Morrowind modding, in my opinion, is economy. How do you make the game fun while also preventing basically this situation? <laughs> <laughs> you know, where you're just, yeah, <laughs> where uh, our friend Rosnant says, that's not going to happen. And indeed, I've done a couple, you know, quick playthroughs. I've done just, you know, a few hours, go to Balmora, go to here and there. Um, and uh, welcome back, Herdrax. Glad you're here. We're just, uh, we started the 6.x dive and uh, the very first one here on the list for the right price. By our friend uh, Necrolesian Rosnant. And uh, this is a really great one that is, in my opinion, probably the best. Um, you know, maybe there's a neat MWSE one that I'm not aware of. But for as far as OpenMW friendly stuff, this is one of the best economy mods we have right now. And uh, it's pretty good, right? Like, 
I've started a new game enough times to know, like, <laughs> in the default game, how rich can you reasonably be when you leave Sedanine? And with this mod, how rich could you be? Right, when you factor in also having, like, friends and foes and other mods that add possible NPCs, right? Like, you might have a random foe encounter, and now suddenly you got, like, a full set of armor you can sell, you know? So you got to factor in things like that. I don't play without friends and foes and also without for the right price or haven't rather in a, in a minute. I'm playing just without both of them or with both of them. But indeed, you end up with uh, even with the extra access to loot for the right price seems to balance it out pretty nicely. And I end up ending up at Balmora like not rich enough to buy every spell I want and then some left over to do whatever, you know, get drunk on skooma. Um so yeah, great and very happy to add this to the list. I think it fits I think it fits well because it's still going to be fun. You have access to all kinds of new stuff everywhere, new content. And you know, you're not going to be like basically you know, uh leaving piles of crap everywhere because it's useless because you don't need to sell it because you're already rich. Uh, <laughs> skooma drunk de degenerate that's how I roll maybe you didn't see the 0 0.47 release video but uh, we ended with a skooma drunk preview of Lua section 8 says yeah usually I end up leaving Cedanane with around 5k yeah about 5k it's about right right like you could be pretty rich definitely rich enough to go and like start that for example one of the things I used to like to do was get as rich as you can in Cedanane and go beeline it to get the quest for a uh, gold brand started and, uh, and usually you can easily be rich enough to go get some spells in, in Balmora and then head to Caldera and do your thing and uh, have 2K ready to get that quest rolling, you know. And certainly I was not in that position to do that now, <laughs> which is good. Um, so, yeah, this goes under the balance and nerfing category. Uh, probably folks will skip it. You know, maybe some people like getting rich. Uh, oh, what am I doing? I'm not putting it in my notes. I'm putting it on the... I'm going to put that in a different window. You know, some people like getting rich and and, and that aspect of the game mechanics. And hey, uh, 5K is almost enough for the yurt, I think, Gonzo says. Yeah, I think that is enough. Um, and you know, hey, if, if somebody likes playing the game way, that way, that's cool. <laughs> you know, that's cool. Respect. You're playing the game the way you want to. Um, but personally, I've played the game enough times that for it to be staying fresh for me, to stay fun, I, I like I like the edge that having an economic balance brings to it, you know. And so this is the by far the best I've seen so far. So, yeah, we're getting it. For the right price. Here we go. Cool. So, yeah, you're not going to leave Satanine with 5K. Depending on how many quests you do, right? Like, I, I like to do the tax collector quest before I piece out of there. Um, you're not, you might leave with a maybe 2K, maybe. Depends if you're, if you're good. Harsh economy plus survival all the way, Section 8 says. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I'm a little less in love with survival stuff. Um, you know, I tried basic needs and, and I loved the implementation. I thought the UI was really cool, but it's, uh, you know, it's... It's not my thing, really. No disrespect, if it is your thing. All right, Gonzo. <laughs> All right, Phew, I'm finally able to use the PC. No more terse, confusing comments. <laughs> You're good, man. You're totally good. You're totally, totally good. So moving on, though. Um, balance and nerfing kind of getting a really big boost here because we've got ownership overhaul here, which takes the place of... Uh, you should try Frostwind, Section 8 says. Huh, okay, well... Um, we're going to look at that in a minute. Once I go over these, we're going to look at that. But I want you to go ahead and in the comments, just let me know there, you know, what's distinct about Frostwind. I don't know if you tried the basic needs Lua mod, but like, what is Frostwind doing? What's the basic needs mod doing? You probably played more Ashfall than me at this point. You know, what's Ashfall doing? Um, what do you love about those mods? Please let me know because I feel like it's, they're all trying to be Minecraft. And that's not my favorite part of Minecraft. Really, you know, like the eating the food stuff. So, okay, ownership overall. Here we go. It's ownership. And this is great. The one that we're using on the website now 
is kind of like a yeah here we go container ownership this is kind of like an early effort I guess you could say on adjusting ownership on lots of things um for example, the various containers you find throughout Balmora, no longer <laughs> free for the taking. And another way you can get rich instantly. You know, forget Saint and Ian, you can just beeline it to Balmora. And uh, if you didn't know, well, here you go. Spoiler alert. You can just loot all those crates and urns and everything. And you can, you can become rich that way, just on all the junk that you find and, and you know, sell. So, so this makes those owned. Um, and it's good, but it's not quite a deep enough change. And so ownership overhaul takes the ESM based approach. And, uh, and this is able to do the job a bit better. So I've been playing with this one. Works quite well. And is a natural fit for what we're doing here on the total overhaul expanded vanilla setup. So we're adding it. Okay. And this one actually is another one that's been around for a minute. Somehow I just missed the memo on it for a couple of years actually. So... Props to Necrolesion. Props and many thanks. I've used many Necrolesion mods over the years. All right. Ownership overhaul. Fleshing out the nerf section. Just a little bit before we take a quick look at Frostwind. I'm interested in the whole survival. I just continue to be interested in the whole survival genre of mods just because everybody loves these games you know and I feel like well we gotta give it a fair chance you know real disposition ah this is another one uh no there you go come on duck duck go to explain why I like survival mods I would ask you a question in return you into XCOM section 8 says so I've only actually ever played uh, the first of the... So they remade and made a bunch of XCOM games. Um, I only ever played the first of those. So as I understand, XCOM is like a turn-based tactical kind of RPG in the vein of Final Fantasy Tactics. That's basically all I know about it. Um, Section 8 says, A lot of emergent creative narratives come out of making your friends and real-life acquaintances, etc. into your companions. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, sounds like some good multiplayer potential. This is the first thing I think of. Anyways, um, real disposition. So this is one uh, by our, our friend Phoenix Ryan, who's, uh, as I recall, hanging out on the OpenMW Discord. But this one, well, we'll just read it from the author's words. This modification makes the disposition of NPCs towards the player more realistic, increases the number of amazing voice lines you'll hear per game. Indeed. So in a nutshell, there's a, there's a lot here. That explains what the mod does. And you should read this all. But in a nutshell, the base game is designed in such a way that you are basically at like 50 or higher disposition for everybody, basically. I think as you can get as low as like the 30s here. Um, 40 to 45 disposition. Yeah, so you start at a pretty high disposition. And there are some voice lines that only occur at a low, very low disposition. And you'll just... Unless you go around, you know, <laughs> insulting or threatening everybody, you're not ever going to hear these things. And then also there's the, the whole fact that it kind of doesn't really fit the game world too much for you to get off the prison ship and you're in a place of uh, racism, xenophobia, and distrust, and uh, everybody's basically cool with you. I mean, some people kind of give you the hint that they don't like Outlanders, but most people act like they're cool with you, you know. So anyways, in a nutshell, this changes that, and people suddenly you start to feel pretty unwelcome. And um, it goes along pretty well with uh, Speechcraft mod, for example, the Speechcraft rebalance uh, efforts that are out there. Because now you actually have, like, a use for Speechcraft. Not everybody loves you more, you know, well enough. Um, and so I believe there's actually some adjustments made to bribery here. And there's a couple presets. I've been playing just with the base preset, but uh, it's it's great. One of these days, <laughs> I will try this, but I feel like so much of the game will be extremely hard this way. So anyway, Section 8 says, you get some really cool character creation. So like some random mission, your best friend kicks it. The same is true for me of survival mods. Suddenly remembering you're getting hungry or dying of thirst. 
during what's normally just getting someone's dad's ashes or something. Yeah, okay. So so that's what intrigues me about it. But at the same time, it just feels like, I don't know, it's another meter I have to watch. I don't know. Anyways, without getting too far off the deep end, and thank you for bringing that up. Uh, oh, if Ain says, yeah, I already nerfed the impact of personality on starting uh, Dispo, but it's still very mild. So this would probably go well with my mod. Yeah, indeed. And it, so far in my experience, does go well. I've been playing them together for a couple of weeks now. So yeah. Definitely we'll be adding this one. And thank you to Phoenix Rhyme for this and a few other things uh, that I use by them. So thank you for their work. And a really thoughtful look at, you know, uh, whoops, at uh, Rethinking Disposition. Because you could argue that the vanilla game is fine, probably. That the way it is is fine. Um, this may be another one that, you know, the balance and nerfing, I feel like, will be something that's the section of the list. It's not, like, necessarily for everyone. Um, maybe for people that have played the game many times and, and know about the, you know, the design paths that you can take. So, so anyway, yeah, here we go. I'll just preview my markup. <clears throat> Boom, okay. Very nice. I'm paranoid, so I'm gonna save it. All right. Yeah, okay, so now, Frostwind. Let's take a look at that. Camping survival mod. Created by Merlord. Chopping trees with an axe. I think we're, like, <laughs> Ashfall exists, so everybody just forgets about this one, huh? Yeah, I mean, it's probably, you know, worth checking out, I would think. Um, chopping of trees with an axe, I think, is something we will probably have soonish. Um, easy, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm trying to find the OpenMW GitLab here. Because I seem to recall. Um, uh, hmm. Maybe it got closed. Or maybe it's just old now. But there is an MR. That's very exciting. I don't want to bury the lead. Let me try and find it first. Here we go. I believe, and I could be wrong, but I believe this is the sauce that we'll need for something like that, which is basically a scene graph API. And this will enable a lot of the, I think, the neat things that Ashfall does. I understand that mod heavily uses scene graph stuff. So it's a bit of an old, <laughs> ah, section eight says, this is, you know, it's a month ago, this has been in the oven, Cody Glassman, our friend Wazabear. Mad props and big thanks. Not ready for review yet, you know, highly experimental, may not even make it into 0 0.49, but it, uh, and it's not a fully fleshed out API yet, Wazabear's own words here, you know, not a great API, failed to come up with some, they're thinking about it right now, but this would enable stuff like the axe chopping or, you know, um, Again, I don't. I never used Ashfall, but I understand that you do use SceneGraph API of MWSE, so um, to do some neat effects. So, in theory, with something like this, when it's merged, we would be able to do similar things. So, really exciting stuff. We'll be looking forward to maybe having it in the future. Fishing, also, yeah, okay, fishing. Right, right. That's right. So, this kind of thing would allow us to stick a fish at the end of a fishing rod, for example. Pretty cool. Um, I don't know if I don't know if um, the line itself is the worst part to script. Interesting, yeah. Of the fishing line, section eight says, um, I don't know if 
survival type or this kind of gameplay stuff fits on total overhaul or not just because I mean it's all sounds pretty cool yeah, I don't know maybe it's worth a shot like I said I tried the basic needs mod and I really appreciated the thought that went into it the UI was really cool had an interesting interaction with the um alchemical hustle mod where I got poisoned by drinking water <laughs> that I got from the swamp admittedly but maybe that's why we'll keep it lore friendly it's because I drank swamp water so anyway I don't know um worth a shot uh to see how it fits but I've always wanted to do like a specifically a survival uh you know mod list actually I was chatting with Abdu a while back and they wanted to do a survival list I gotta reach out to them again because it would be really cool to do something like that and and have like a really good list because maybe not everything in Total Overhaul fits with an Ashfall kind of a game. So, um, oh, typical GitLab flavored markdown doc. Say this: remember to leave a blank line before and after any markdown sections. Uh, Gonzo says, "Yeah, you know this is the thing about markdown. If I may rant a little bit, that it's just not great, and that that is everybody kind of has their own little." peculiarities about it there's reddit markdown and this that markdown section 8 says it's been a while since i used it but to be honest Fro frostwind is more about staying warm and dry than a need related thing okay cool so it could accompany basic needs then too even anyway survive a survival list is something along with like a, a multiplayer list a server list that i really want to do in my copious free time Maybe we'll get there. NFA says, don't drink swamp water, kids. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, well, it's funny because in the basic needs mod page, you can see the author making a joke about drinking swamp water, and it's totally fine. And ah, it's not if you're using uh, the alchem alchemical hustle mod. So anyways, um, just had an interesting thought about how would you detect you're getting water from a swamp and fill the bottle accordingly with maybe some like, you know, dirty water from Fallout or something. But uh, cool. Yeah, I don't know. Something to keep on the radar. We're not going to add it to 6.x. Because I'm just, you know. It's a big, like, friend, uh, friends and friends uh, companion mod by Danae. Which looks excellent. But it is quite, you know. Quite a lot of changes. And I would want to play with it quite a bit first. Before I see, you know, uh, commit to putting it in the list. And we're not sure how it fits with everything else. So cool. Thank you for bringing this up, Section 8. This looks really great. Um... You know, Merlord is one of the, you know, gems of the community. Makes lots of great stuff for the MWC crowd. And looking forward to actually trying this and seeing what it's about. And, yeah, getting getting some Ashfall-like stuff for our users. Cool. And, yeah, this. Keep an eye out on this. This is more exciting stuff for potentially 0 0.49 or the future. Um, Okay, cool. Yeah, Section 8 says, after, if you have some time, just let me know what format you'd like it in. I can try to MR some of the MP stuff. I really appreciate that. And yeah, uh, maybe not today, but uh, in the following week, you know, we can chit-chat about that. And I would really appreciate that. Thank you so much, sir. Because, yeah, I feel like I feel like we want to have multiplayer content on there, but I'm just not knowledgeable at it right now. So it just be really, it would be hard for me to do it properly. So I appreciate your help. All right, coming back to the list here. So, um, Sotha's Combat Pack actually has a uh, something that affects fatigue usage. And I found that with Sotha's Combat Pack and better fatigue usage, it ended up being a like kind of little crazy. That's her fatigue. Ended up being a little crazy in terms of like how much fatigue I was losing. And I found myself like not really having fun. So I thought in addition to removing carry on and carry on tweaks and replacing them with fatigue and speed and carry weight rebalance open MW, which we'll look at momentarily. Um, we should probably also drop this because I feel like Sotha's mod just does a better job at this. Um, it's, part of the combat pack tuned to go along with it you know and this is just like piling on top of it and it's a little bit much um curious to hear anybody else's impression if you've used this with the combat pack and you felt like it's a little excessive i kind of did especially because i'm mostly doing new characters testing that you know 
um, set up. And it just felt rough to start out, you know, with new characters. Um, so I think we're going to drop it. Um, better fatigue usage. And we'll just lean on Sothis Combat Pack for this. So let's, uh, let's go to the gameplay file. Uh, here. Uh, well, we're not going to actually... Hmm. So what I want to do actually is let's go back to the issue. And I think we should have a, this is the additions list, but we should maybe have a little section of things that are, or maybe note, when we note, I uh, haven't really thought this through totally, so please bear, bear with me. When we note, for example, fatigue and speed and carry weight rebalance, let's go pull this one up. When we note this one, we can say that it replaces, because uh, it kind of does, right? Like, it's not actually replacing it specifically, but it is related to the addition. This one right here. And, uh, yeah, I had an interesting conversation with Mr. Flames on Nexus Mods uh, on the comment section of Carry On Tweaks about kind of like the specifics of the tweaks relating to fatigue usage and stuff. And, uh, you know, Mr. Flames did a really thoughtful look at what works with specifically Starwind, but I found that these changes actually work really well with Morrowind. Um, very compatible with Starwind, also very compatible, in my opinion, with Morrowind. Um, your opinion, it depends on, so one of the reasons why I really like this is because Mr. Flames really put a lot of thought into this, and they really wanted to have a, a good experience along the lines of what I was going for, right? Like you don't want to just be draining all your fatigue by walking around and doing basic things, but also you want it to be reasonably balanced. And they clearly put a lot of thought into it. Um, you can check the comment thread on carry on tweaks, for example, and we, we went back and forth and ultimately I decided this is better than my own take on carry on. Um, and it works really well. I like it a lot. So yeah, we're going to actually drop three mods from the gameplay section and pick this one up. Uh, and if you're not using it yet, I would encourage you to check it out. I think it's a pretty good take on fatigue and speed and carry weight and all that. Me, personally, I am not the biggest fan of carry weight as a gameplay me mechanic, and I tend to cheese it a little bit. So I would actually make, you know, strength give you more carry weight just because I... It's not fun for me, but if you're somebody who's into like a survival kind of role playing, you know, you absolutely would really appreciate these tweaks a lot. Okay, and let's find carry on here. By the way, Gonzo, if you need some help with that formatting, let me know after the stream, and I'll try and... Uh, I might not be able to look today, actually, but uh, you know, maybe we can try and hack that and make that work. Oh, you think you nailed it? Cool, man. Awesome. Herdrax says, People should know this already by intuition, in my humble opinion, but maybe the gameplay and rebalance mods could use a little use it at your own risk. Maybe better for a second playthrough disclaimer on their usage notes section. That's a really good call out, Herdrax. That's a that's a very good call out. Um, we should do that, and I'm almost wondering, right? Like, if we, sh we should do something like this. Um, the thing is, I'm not. So right here, I was thinking, put a note right here. But the problem is, probably many people don't even see this. I would never even see this text whatsoever. It is likely that they would see it here, though. You know, so yeah, so maybe it does belong in the usage notes. Um, all right. And some nerfing. Uh, just a general note. General note. Yep, yep, a general note. Okay, to make it more practical to implement. Cool. Um, that's a good call out as well. I think the... 
I think the best thing we can do right now um, is since it's not particularly a huge section with a lot of mods, is we can just stick it in the usage notes for each one, and and maybe also it's fine to also put it like right here too. Um, good call out, definitely we need that. Um, so yeah, we'll have it right here. Um, Maybe these are best for a second or more playthrough. Indeed, right? Like, if you've never played Morrowind, you don't need to, you know, you don't need to change disposition or the economy. Experience it how Todd intended. Because I think, um, and the same goes for leveling, right? Like, you're not going to know why real disposition is good. If you haven't played the original game and you kind of know how it behaves, or maybe it wouldn't be good in your opinion, you know? And so, yeah, um, definitely a good call out uh, for sure. Now, what did I break here? Oh, okay. Yeah, just put a, uh, just put a star. Okay. Uh, that's kind of what expanded vanilla is for, right? Gonzo asks. Well, so not quite, um, but it does beg the question, do we need something like that? So taking a step back, um, expanded vanilla is effectively, or what I've tried to make it is the the same as content as total overhaul, but without graphics stuff. So quests, gameplay tweaks, these kinds of things, all identical between the two, but no normal maps, no you know um, high res meshes with some exceptions. Um, but maybe so maybe we do need like oh so then you have graphics overhaul which does. The opposite, right? It has the graphics things, but no, with an asterisk, gameplay stuff. Maybe we need, like, something like iHeart Vanilla Plus that has some cool stuff. Yeah, oops, I'm thinking of graphics overhaul. Yeah, so that's kind of what graphics overhaul is or intended to be. But as we talked about in previous streams, like, even mods which are considered graphically overhauling, right, like BCOM, do add some quests, and it's just like, hey deal with it <laughs> you want them you know so her drag says gameplay section i think could use some examination later on some intense mods in there like sylphus combat mod for example yeah for sure that's another one right like maybe if you haven't played morrowind you don't exactly want that um uh, yes okay like a new list in between that gonzo says yeah exactly so i think that's what we're all kind of driving at here like maybe we need a total overhaul for newbies which excludes some stuff like natural character growth and decay, combat mods, stuff, you know, stuff that like, okay, okay, you're a newbie, you want to you wanna play the game with better, better graphics. Maybe that's what graphics overhaul is or should be. Maybe there's something in between graphics overhaul. Great call out from both of you. Um, you know, I'm certainly open to adding more lists, but we got to make sure that if we add a list that it doesn't kind of like, you know, gather dust. We want to keep it up to date. That's what we do here. Okay, um, yeah, carry and carry on, carry on tweaks, you know, these would be probably not great. My first playthrough mods. So yeah, it's always nice to... get you know better new content but also to like replace two with one and that's basically what we're doing here and i'm also going to go ahead and include better fatigue excuse me usage her direct says i still think to total overhaul should be the crown jewel of the site and in there maybe though through usage notes or some other tool help people filter out sections mods to suit their style absolutely good call out 100 percent agree and to that end a feature that i've talked about on prior streams that i really want to implement is like some way to uh make changes to a list and persist it locally Right, So like, okay, I, I start Total Overhaul, that loads up all those mods, and then as people are kind of checking through it, right, so I'm doing Total Overhaul, yeah, yeah, oh, you know what, oh, you know what, mm, I don't want this one, and you can maybe click a button that would like pop it out of your list, and then when you get to the very end, 
uh, you know, you go to the CFG generator and we could maybe have another button that says load up my setup and it could read what they have and give them an appropriate load order based on what they've popped or, or added in even, you know. Um, and that's something that wouldn't be too hard. Famous last words. Um, it wouldn't be that hard. It would be JavaScript. A lot of JavaScript. I'm envisioning the mechanisms for, uh, you know, getting a local list would be JavaScript. Um, and And it would never go to my server. It would all be saved only locally on your computer, so 100% privacy respecting. It would never go to my server. I would never know what your lists are. We could do that, and I think we need that for sure. It's just like it's it's not a small project. It's not going to be hard, but it's not a small project indeed. Um, and it's going to go along with fixing the. So another thing that I've talked about on the stream and privately with many of you is fixing the data here, how we represent plugins. So that we can know more intelligently on the list, like, oh, okay, we show this plugin with this list and this plugin with that list and this plugin with no lists and so on to give people a better experience here on the CFG generator overall. We're really a stone's throw away from having an awesome experience here, uh, more awesome than we have now. I think what we have is good, but it could be much better. And a lot of, like, these manual notes would just go away because we could do it for people, you know. And, of course, there's no substitute for just sorting it yourself with MLOX, and I encourage you to do that. So, woohoo! Punching my mic there. Excuse me. All right. Back to the list, though. Better fatigue usage. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just... We'll lump that as being in part of this replacement, because Sothis got added in quite a while ago, and I didn't really realize that they don't go too well together in my opinion um, until after playing with them both quite a bit and yeah it just feels like a little bit much like really painful I don't find fatigue draining to be a super fun mechanic um, when it's excessive you know when I have to like stand around and, and get fatigue back by waiting that's no good that's not fun so okay yeah this one replaces these three it's just fair to have that there and okay, uh, so uh, <sighs> Herdrax says, wait, wait, wait. What we have here is amazing already, please. You, Gonzo, everybody else has changed my leisure time used completely after I found the project. Hey, awesome. Thank you. That's a huge compliment. Um, I'm glad to hear that. And, uh, you know, one of the goals of the stream was to bring people on board, and hey, here we are. So I'm glad that week after week I'm privileged to have you guys with me. And so let's carry on, shall we? Uh, this one, Sensible Races and Birth Signs, has been on the list for a minute, and I just feel like Races Respected is kind of a, it's kind of a better take. I don't know. I'm liking it. This stuff tends to be subjective, and that's why I think it's good that we have the alternates you know, feature on the website. And when we have the sort of the, the select your own mod setup that I mentioned working, you know, it would be easy for people to be like, well, maybe I want, you know, uh, sensible races or whatever, you know, maybe I want this, that, or, you know, whatever. It would be easy to drop things in and out. So, um, huh. Somehow not tracking this one or endorsed, but yeah, I've been I've been using this one. I like it a lot. Um, so yeah, we're gonna put that on there and replace sensible races and birth signs, which I just find is a little bit of a you know again it's a subjective thing, but I find it fits a little bit better. So we're gonna move on to the gameplay section here. Um, and we're going to put fatigue and speed and carry weight rebalance open MW down in there too. On the note of the gameplay section too, I feel like there's a lot jumbled in there. This is an eternal struggle that I have, by the way. It's just the general categorization of things. You have 32 mods in here. And there's all kinds of stuff in here. You got leveling. You got, you know, fixes how alchemy works. You got changing monsters from the expansions loading in the, you know, all just a huge soup of things. And I feel like we need to split this out into to make it more digestible for people to pick and choose things they maybe want. We would need to split this out, right? Like maybe we need like gameplay stats or a separate one for gameplay uh 
you know, you got quite a few here, like clearing your name, faction service beds, you know. These, I think, are kind of similar in that they affect, you know, how your your reputation. But then you have stuff like lower first person sneak. You know, it just feel some of these feel like they do and don't go together. On the move, Ashland or Ten. I think this should actually be a player home. So, long story short, there's big changes to be had here, and uh, you know, I'm open to ideas. I've already changed some things in my local setup, but we could do more. Because it's a big chunk. Holy moly. 32 mods. Is that possibly the biggest section here? Maybe. On a quick scan, it looks like it is. So I think we could improve it. We could improve the user experience here by dividing things up logically. But I'm not going to think too hard about it right now. All right. Herdrak says, I think just moving them to balance and nerfing would work. Balance is a word that already resonates as a warning with players. Okay, that's really good. That's good input. I think you're right. I think it could work there, moving some of them. Yeah, I think uh, I think it could work there. I think you're right. So when we actually do the... So this actually could go back under. <laughs> so the exact opposite of what I just did, uh, Herdrak is suggesting. And I think I think you're right, though. Right, like... Fatigue and speed and carry weight rebalance. I mean, balance is in the name of the mod even. So I think it's good to just include this up here. Okay, cool. I'm sold. Okay, uh, this is just a... I don't think we'll include this in the list. This is just a personal mod I made. It's like the class that I always pick, but I got sick of designing the custom class, so I made a custom plugin that adds it. But I, it's, you know, it's very specific to me, so I don't think we're going to... I don't think we're going to add that one. But uh, whoop. don't try this at home. Whoa, here we go. We got this one is a really exciting addition. Something I did not expect to see in 0 0.48. And that's this uh, MBSP uncapped. And I think it's fair to say that this is also fits under balance and nerfing. Does I mean, it does a lot of things here, right? Like uncapping beyond 100, that's like... That's balance. That's so many other things. Um, but anyways, this replaces the old MW script based one completely, including the version that we're recommending on the website right now and all the features that it does. It can automatically be compatible with whatever class you pick, whatever your skills are, um, because it's because it's Lua. So big thanks to Phoenix Warrior 7 for doing that. And uh, it says it's designed for use with and requiring NCGD MW Lu Edition, which is made by yours truly. Not clear to me. After looking at the script a little bit, it's not clear to me why it requires my mod, but hey, certainly goes with it well. Am I getting here? I need the link. Uh, and a really neat approach to the uncapping mechanic, too. Um, basically, the old approach that natural character grow growth and decay used to use, whereby it had spells that would buff you um, beyond 100. I mean, you don't even need to do that now, thanks to Lua. That's all pointless. You know, you could just directly manipulate the stats, and that's what they do. Um and there's no need for, like, the mastery thing, although maybe something like that would be cool to sort of slow the growth beyond 100. You know, maybe we can make an add-on for this in the future in our copious free time. Just check my link here. Ooh, you know what? And I didn't... Um, maybe you noticed, but I didn't add races respected. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll need to know that it's replacing as well. And this has uh, some extra open MW, I'm sorry, MWSE Lua features. I don't know if they're doable in open MW Lua yet. Uh, it's something about like a dynamic. Maybe you could. A dynamic uh, sign for Argonians. Let's take a look. I think you might be able to do that now in 0 0.49. Uh, 
dynamically change Argonian skill bonuses. Okay, I think it might be able to do this. Hmm. So it's worth a look. Um, I actually didn't look at the MWSC Lewis script, but it's probably worth a look. Maybe we can implement this in 0 0.49 Open MW Lua. So um, I'm noticing more and more things so that we can do that with. So hey, maybe in another stream we can take a look. All right, uh, I'm gonna put a note here. Mm, I have too many tabs open. This replaces this one. And we'll leave that note on there. Maybe I won't get a chance to do it, but we could at least verify, you know, hey, is this is this doable? Here's an idea, specifically for you folks that are here with me right now in the chat. Is it worth looking into, you know, and kind of keeping uh, like what we can port from MWSE Lua? Is it worth like keeping a running list? So, so that's, you know, people looking to work on stuff kind of have an idea of what they could work on. Definitely Section 8 says, okay, I mean, hey, one thumbs up is all I need. <laughs> I think we should do it. If any of y'all feel like making an issue, otherwise uh, I'm going to think about it over the weekend. And yes, it is worth it. Yes, it would be nice if we had a scale from like, yeah, yeah, definitely to rate the complexity and difficulty. So for the 2022 uh, Modathon, Erm and I actually had such a list. Uh, so maybe I'll pull Erm into this effort and... Uh, you know, we can scale difficulty of porting and stuff. Yes. Okay, we'll do that. And we'll include this one. I think would be easy one, honestly. Changing stats is easy, relatively speaking. Starting at map mods up to Merlord. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's a good scale. <laughs> All right. Um, cool. So keep that in mind. Um, that's something I definitely want to do. Because this one, and again, friends and friends, I feel like... All the MWSE Lua friends and friends. Let's take a look at what it does real quick. So MWSE. Excuse me. Random spawn for companions. I swear this should be doable. As of 0 0.48. Excuse me. Oh. Companions with major restoration automatically heal the player if they have Magicka. I'm not sure if this is doable with 0 0.49 or 0 0.48, but I think it is with both. Companions with alchemy and scouts automatically forage, pick up plant ingredients. I don't know if this is doable. But these don't, especially once the API allows these things, they don't especially sound super hard to do, you know? So it's, it'd be good to say, hey, like, hey, we, we ported this and then, you know, throw it over the fence to Danae or like what I plan on doing with MD and the lightning rods. You know, once we fix that LOD issue, I'm going to definitely donate that to MD and hopefully it will include it for OpenMW users. So, yeah, cool. Well, I love that you guys love that idea because I feel it would be good to keep that going, keep that effort going. To give people an idea who want to work on something, you know, uh, this is what you could reasonably do, even if they don't work on a port, right? Like if we say you could do A, B, and C, maybe they might do a completely original. Um, El Tariel, hey, glad you're here in, in the chat. And uh, they ask, can you create new spell effects with Lua now? There's a couple of MWSE exclusive spells, mostly summons, added by Tamriel Rebuilt, and we're kind of just waiting until OpenMW is capable of that. So in 0 0.49, you can create new spell effects with Lua. Um, I don't knew, know exactly the internals of how it works, but that's how the... So if you want an example, uh, the basic needs mod does it. Actually, I think that... Yeah, that's... I have to really quick check. 
This requires a dev build. Yeah, okay, yep, yep. So in 0 0.49, they're already working on de-hard coding spellcasting and combat for VR purposes. But uh, so that encompasses a lot of things, like way more than you would think. Maybe you're aware if you're involved with Tamra we built. Um, but we can now on 0 0.49 create new spell effects. You cannot create a new spell, I think. Uh, I haven't played with it yet. So if you're curious about how it works, though, I would download Basic Needs for OpenMW and take a look at uh, what our friend here, Jazzlifer, has done. Because um, they're doing that. That's how they achieve the hunger and the thirst effects. They're just adding like a thirst spell effect you know um so you can with an asterisk is it's a work in progress and uh let me just uh re read uh, open mw lewis scripting Altariel says basically what we need is the to be able to replace a spell with a certain id added by our esm with a custom spell <sighs> I'm not exactly sure. I'm sorry. I'm not exactly sure yet, but you can look under, um, and section eight says, I was considering it in relation to Starwind, but doing an immersive map mod sounds easy and cool. Yeah, totally. I would love that. I would love to see something like that. Mod Jam is next week, my dude. Um, so if we look under types here. The documentation can be kind of dry and kind of terse. So again, if you want a working example, look at basic needs, but definitely pair it with looking at the docs here. But we have uh, active effects. Here we go. Yeah, modify. So you can you can remove and set and modify active effects um, with IDs using IDs. So maybe that's close to what you need. I'm curious. Um, cool. Thank you, Gonzo. Awesome. Appreciate that. Working on the formatting on that issue. Let's just open that up here. Um, yeah, Altario, definitely, you know, uh, follow up on Discord, if you please, and uh, nice, very nice, Gonzo, I appreciate that. Follow up on Discord, if you please. Um, you know, uh, Zach has a cat, always hanging out in the Lewitt channel, uh, Peter McKee, Full, we're all in there. Um, I don't know exactly, but it sounds like we're really close to being able to do what you folks need for TR, so, you know, certainly, let's keep this conversation going in the, uh, uh, you know, enable cool Lua stuff for OpenMW campaign that we want to go get going here, so, yeah, um, anybody who's curious, check it out, thanks, Altaria says, awesome, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy that you mentioned that, because, um, you know, uh, we're still, like I mentioned earlier in the stream, we can, we're at a point now where we can start reasonably thinking about getting these things ported over and available to OpenMW users because uh, awesome folks on the dev team are just like blowing us away so sweet all right uh, NBSP uncapped so this one is going to replace uh, I think just one from the list here oh, I'm getting a little crazy with the thank you again Gonzo this is excellent holy smokes big help and I'm super, I just can't say how, like, blown away I am about the prospect of reducing, you know, 31 clean, dirty plugins to five. You know, that's just, like, whew. broke down and just made it a wiki page. Cool. All right. That works. Thank you, Gonzo. That's much appreciated. Uh, I'm all over the place here. Let's say MBSP. So, MBSP. So, I believe at this point we're using a patched version of a patched version of a patched version, of, you know, thrice patched again. <laughs> Yeah, okay. This one has better sounds still. Um, I took better sounds off these two lists. So anyway, it's going to be replacing both of these, though. I'm going to pull them both up. Because it doesn't need to be hacked to work with better sounds. It'll work with better sounds or whatever else you've got. It doesn't require on hacks. Uh, it doesn't depend on hacks to do its thing. Which is good. You know, instant compatibility, not relying on hacks. Gotta love what a better scripting API gives you. And that's why 0 0.48 releasing is awesome on yet another level. <laughs> Fixed yet again dot ESP. <laughs> Says Gonzo. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I think that one is, that's like one of the most patched patched patches that I've ever seen. <laughs> 
because people just kept finding new issues um you know for a while it was like every couple of months somebody else would email me saying oh yeah i fixed so and so and better sounds i'm like oh cool So it'll be good to replace this. No hacks required. No thinking about Toddisms, really. Just run the mod and be happy. Maybe tweak some things if you like it. Yeah, exactly. Clean, clean, fixed yet again. <laughs> Section 8 says... <laughs> or if you're like the Saboteur mods, which have a clean kind of suffix of the name part, you know? So it'd be like clean... <laughs> Random mod fix, clean, fix, clean, compat fix, ESP. Yes, a fan. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we need the chat overlay. We're gonna miss this. <laughs> That's good stuff. Um, I have time next week to actually look into that. By the way, so we should have that. You gotta laugh. You really gotta laugh. We have a good time. All right, okay, better sounds. So we want the not better sounds one here. So yeah, ditch in the hacks. Join in the future. Um, cool. Very good. Um, so once Zach has a cat actually releases his Lua Multimark mod, we'll add that to the gameplay section. We'll replace the ESP Multimark mod that's on there now. Um, it's not quite released yet, so we're not going to do it today. But it's happening. It's happening. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, so we have fatigue. Carry weight, I already starting to get a little illegible. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Looking good. All right. Let's collapse this so I don't have to look at a bunch of stuff. Pickpocket rebalance. Our friend of fame. Let's throw that in there. So yeah, good call, Herdrax, I think, on um, you know, throwing a lot of the gameplay stuff into balance and nerfing. Definitely good call on that. Um... Let's see here. And I think it's going to make the um, the balance and nerfing section make more sense, right? Like all that stuff will appear more natural with that stuff and uh, it'll be easier for people not looking for those sort of changes to maybe carve them out, you know? So here we go. And yeah, I, I decided to go with this one because... I thought, frankly, that the numbers that you picked, you know, um, were good. Like, success chance to 100% makes sense. Some of the other ones out there only go up to 90, for example. Um, so I've been playing with it, and I rather like it. I don't normally do a lot of uh, pickpocketing, you know, so this has been kind of new for me. It's cool to play on the Steam Deck, though. Like, I don't know, for me, sneaking is a lot more fun because I can, like, tilt the analog stick to achieve different movement speeds, and it just... It's... It, better than a keyboard sorry <laughs> it just is um so yeah this has been cool to look at actually making pickpocket you know one of many mods that does it but actually making pickpocket like worth doing and doable to begin with so yeah thank you for that really appreciate it And this is one I would argue even somebody who's kind of trying to skip up some nerfing gameplay stuff may want this. Uh, oh, yeah, it's it's definitely my pleasure. All right. Let's see here. Moving on. Better Blight. All right, so we got a couple here that are really going to... It's going to enhance the environmental experience of the game. And you'll see why in a second. So we got Better Blight here. Sothis Better Blight, Sothis Blight Weather Pack, Better Blight combined, those two, do a few things. Changes the dynamics of the weather of the whole island. Let's, you know, you don't want to look at my diff here. Let's look at the actual mod, shall we? But this, by the way, Better Blight, Nexus Mod Spawn, this is the one that actually enables us to have lightning at Dwemer Towers on the mainland. No, 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 that's not it. Right? Is that the one that I want? Better play. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Cool. So, 
This one changes the effects of blight diseases. Uh, Gonzo, I love the lightning rod so much. Man, me too. I think at last week's stream, we like had a scene where I was showing, I think I was showing Smalio the, the airship, and we ended up accidentally catching a bunch of lightning strikes on footage. And it was, I just had to stop and like let it happen. So anyways, we're tweaking uh, the blight spells, the effects sort of that you get from them. Um says, I find it rather boring. The dreaded blight is nothing more than a handful of souped-up common diseases. Yeah, I mean, you could argue that this is, uh, you know, just one of the many inconsistencies of the game. So anyway, we don't have this on the list now. I felt like it was a, you know, natural fit for what we're trying to do. Um, Is this gameplay or is this balance and nerfing? Let me know what you think. I'm going to tentatively stick it under gameplay. Right, because getting the diseases is like a gameplay mechanic. I don't know. I could be swayed. Sway me. Better blight. But this one goes hand in hand and was recommended by the next one we're going to get. Goes hand in hand with and was recommended by. Sotha's Blight Weather Pack. And this is the one that gives us the lightning. In the Ashlands. <laughs> I definitely love Sotha's style here. <laughs> yeah, so, and these are some of the messages that will pop up while you're playing um, and are kind of like a cue that some influence is about. Um, and so there's a couple of aspects to this. We're not going to go into detail about how to use it just right now. When we add them onto the site, we will, though, clearly state uh, what to use. But there's a couple choices that the user will make here. We'll outline those for people. A sensible default for people. Um, but yeah, this is a breakdown of... Various probabilities you'll get with this. So, um, you know... It's rare, but you can launch the game and in Satanine have an ash storm. Which does jive with... I think, uh, the in-game descriptions of things, right? Like, you get the impression that they should be having ash storms everywhere on Vardenfeld while somebody's influence is around, right? Um, so anyway, I just felt like, yeah, this... I, I came to this while looking at Soltis mods, and I thought, oh, this is a really neat take on it. And then I realized, oh, you know, shit. If we use this, we can also get the, the lightning rods and actually have them be useful. We never added them when they came out because we didn't have any mods in the list that brought lightning to the Ashlands. So, yeah, I think uh, this will be these two. Wow, I see them flowing in, Gonzo. Thank you so much. All those issues are flowing in on the GitLab. Make it rain. We'll go ahead and I see it's about time and Smalley and I got to get ready to get on an airship ride ourselves. So we're going to end it here at Blotha, Soltha's Blight Weather Pack. I can't speak, let alone type today. Don't try speaking at home. All right. But real quick, before we say goodbye, we're going to go ahead and let's review what we've done and we'll deploy the website. And yeah, I encourage everybody, uh, yeah, Section 8 Later Laters. We'll see you next week. Let's do a real quick review of what we've done, though, first. Before we say goodbye, friends. Okay, so I'm gonna click that, and I'm gonna go ahead and start the start the deploy. Though I think there will be more changes. Um, Gonzo, Herdrax, my friends, I will reach out to y'all on Discord, and we'll discuss kind of what's gonna be in the pipe. But for now, we'll go ahead and put that uh, website deploy out there. Typing is hard. There we go. 
All right. And yeah, just, uh, wow, quite a few hundred percents in a row. Keeping the scope of the streams, you know, reasonable. I'm only planning things that I know I could reasonably do. And uh, yeah, we had a lot of cool <laughs> things come up today. Most importantly, though, 0 0.48 is released or releasing. It's on GitHub, at least. Don't hate me, team. I'm not... <laughs> I'm not letting the cat out of the bag. I just pay attention to GitHub. Uh, we looked at Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 3 in OpenMW. Um, a bit of a rough look, but wow, pretty crazy. Edge AA still busted. We might have to reach out to folks about that. Delta plugin, auto cleaning, multi mark, cleaning up some issues, and adding more mods as we do here. So thank you, everybody. It's been a pleasure, as always. And I wish you a lovely day. Happy modding. And we'll see you next time. And be ready for the summer mod jam. We're doing it. Peace.